Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. In this episode, I shall be doing a unpainted pink challenge, which could possibly be a first of its kind. It will involve the paint stripping and refurbishment of this Matchbox Lesney number 57A, a Wolseley 1500 car which came out in 1958 and ran for three years and then the engine blew up no what i meant is it ran for three years and then in 1961 they stopped making them um, they came out in various shades of pale green and um, they had silver or gold trim that's the headlights bumpers and radiator grills if you've got one and it's got the gold trims they are worth a little bit more than the ones with the the more common version with the silver trims and uh, another nice little touch was that matchbox painted the tail lights red so let's have a little look at this pink car somebody's painted pink and they've it was probably their pride and joy at the time now what i find unusual about this car is that it has a yellow plastic interior and uh, I'm not too sure that in 1958 Matchbox cars came out with interiors. So that is a little bit intriguing. So on further inspection I can see that I suspect that this has been pulled apart by someone in the past. And that they have painted it pink and somehow installed a new interior from another model. If you look underneath... I just noticed there the top right hand side that there is a number stamped on the base and it is indeed number 57 and as I'm looking at that I can see around the rivet there the rivet post there's a very shiny section that looks a little bit odd um, and it's on the front and the back of the rivet so once again this raises suspicion that this has been tampered with and has possibly been glued back together, hence the shiny area around the rivet. So, what I'm going to do is pull it apart and look inside and try and find out what the story is with this uh, yellow interior. And because it's been pulled apart before and there's no screw there, I think a person just prized it apart and popped it back together with glue. So let's have a look. If I use this little flat bladed screwdriver, very light pressure, the base just pops off quite easily. Front and rear. This uh, yellow interior that I'm prizing out now comes out quite easily. And I did notice that uh, from viewing it through the windscreen, it had no steering wheel so it looks like maybe somebody modified this from another car and somehow trimmed it back and squeezed it in there and they had to remove the steering wheel and maybe a little dashboard to make it fit now underneath it says something like gun b something something so if you know where this came from i'd be interested to know what model it's out of i'll just keep it in my box of interiors for maybe future use now having a look inside you can see that beautiful green colour, that's the original colour. And um, I'm looking at the base here and I'm thinking I am going to do what the previous owner did. I'm not going to pull it apart, I'm going to try and repaint it, clean it up and put it back together again without separating the axles. A lot of people find that separating the axles is the hardest part of doing a makeover. So this might be of interest for those people that don't have the tools or the knowledge of how to pull them apart. I'm going to use this Tamiya paint that is actually called Sky. Now I've never seen a green sky before. I've seen green ground but not green sky. So it's an unusual name for Tamiya to, to give this green paint I feel. So first up unpainted pink challenge involves stripping off the pink paint. Here's a little bit of time-lapse photography here. It took about five minutes for the paint to become softened and all crinkly now. Trying to take it off with some 
just some warm soapy water and uh, guess what I found a pink toothbrush that I thought I'd lost and uh, it's great to be reunited with it it's a great little tool and I've used it many many times and it still works as well as it used to can you see that paint coming off now it is beautiful it's a great feeling when all that paint comes off but yet again the matchbox paint underneath is not affected particularly well by the paint stripper that I use which is the poly stripper paint stripper and it does seem to resist but it gives me another indication of the original color so it's all good reference material there for me to use to try and make it look original so I give it another coat and another scrub and it does take a little while I must admit longer than I thought but there we go strip back down to the metal and you can see all the details but you know what you can't see them that well so what I'd like to do is give it an undercoat of Tamiya light grey so I'll do that now and now you can see the detail in great detail is um, it's a four-door version of a car there's a beautiful little grill there look at those miniature grill slots there that have been cast in this Headlights, indicators, door handles. Kind of fat, and fat little trim on the door there running back over the rear guard. And these here I'm pointing out with the toothpick on the side. They could be like side blinkers perhaps. I'm not familiar with the original vehicle. So I don't know how accurate this model is. But Matchbox were normally pretty accurate. So I can only guess that those were indicators. So because it's now been undercoated, it's uh, ready for the top coat. This sky colour from Tamiya. So once again, I just tip it into a little shot glass. I'm running out of this thinners here, Mr. Is it Mr. Hobby thinners? I'm not sure. But I'm running out, but it's good because you can mix it up. You can buy a concentrate of it and mix it up with pure distilled water. It works out a little bit cheaper than buying it in bulk pre-mixed so into the spray booth fan on light on it's like lights camera action here we go there's my camera stand see that giving away some of my secrets here so I just go through the motions here to get my muscle memory working and away I go just a very light coat initially just to see how the paint is see whether it's too runny too thick going on blotchy or whatever first impressions are good I'm very very happy with that color I'm happy with that after I finish painting sometimes when you're reassembling the model it gets scratched or damaged slightly so I never immediately throw away the paint that I've used to paint the model. I always hang back and keep it preserved using two shot glasses and some tape there so that I can touch up any damage that may occur when it's being reassembled. And because I'm not pulling this apart, I've got to clean these wheels in situ. Interestingly, they've also got yellow paint on there. So this could have been originally green, then yellow, and then pink. Who knows? Now this is an old trick. What, what I'm working with here is plastic tyres. They are grey plastic wheels. And as you know, paint stripper can damage plastic, I'm sure. And I've used brake fluid before on transparencies to get paint off of uh, clear windscreens and that. So I'm trying again with this dot 4 brake fluid and a cotton bud. And I'm working away at this paint to see whether or not I can clean these wheels using this old technique of mine however it doesn't seem to work now I do know that brake fluid comes in several types I can never remember which one was a good one for the windscreens so I've got a combination here I've got the dot four now I'm trying some dot three brake fluid
and somewhat disappointingly, again, it doesn't seem to affect the pink or the yellow paint. So the dot three didn't work. The dot four didn't work. But now I've got this other solution of a secret liquid common household product. And uh, if you can guess what it is before I tell you, then um, you get a gold star. But this seems to work a little bit better than the brake fluid does. So it's another tool in my kit to cleaning paint off of plastic parts and it is of course Dettol which is just a disinfectant or an antiseptic I can't remember which but uh, oh it makes your head spin when you smell it but it's supposed to be good for you um, <laughs> so there you go go out and get some Dettol for your plastic parts now I have to paint strip the base and I want to be very careful I don't get the paint stripper on the tyres because I've gone through that, all that trouble of uh, cleaning off the paint. And I don't want the paint stripper to get on the tyres and melt them. So I'm basically painting the paint stripper on with a small pencil brush. Just only stripping the black paint off of the base and not touching the tyres in any way. So I've got to repaint it black and I don't want to repaint the tires so I thought I'd try something different here I found this assorted heat shrink tubing that I had in the garage when I was giving it a clean out the other day and I thought I might try something new so what I've done is I've cut some little tubes of heat shrink off and they fit perfectly over these old little tires or wheels and I thought they might be good as a substitute for masking tape which can be a bit fiddly to uh, wrap around the tyres. I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And I figured if I'm spraying at 90 degrees to the base, there should be minimal overspray, I guess, on the inside of the wheels. So I thought I'd give it a go with this Tamiya X1 Gloss Black. I usually use the satin spray out of a spray can, but I've run out. So I'm going to put that on my shopping list for next weekend. Satin black paint's a bit of a cheat, really. Now, whilst the paint's drying, I thought I heard the postie just before. The dogs were barking, and I heard a car revving and a door slam. So I'm going out to check to see if there's any mail. Oh, there is something there. What is it? Uh, it's a parcel. Ah, oh, typical. It's for Kevin. He's been buying stuff again online. There you go. He's probably been using my account. He's gone crazy with this online shopping lark. I don't know where he's getting his money from, um, but uh, he's always getting a parcel every second day of this or that. I'm not too sure what it is he's buying. I just hope it's not more of those seeds that he got from Canada because they were duds that didn't seem to grow. They were supposed to be tomato seeds apparently, but I never saw one tomato come up. So the paint's dry, let's see how these wheels turned out. Wow, actually that uh, heat shrink worked really well. Look at that, those tyres look uh, untouched. As good as masking tape, except on the back, where I did get a little bit of overspray more than I thought I would. So I'm now going to have to address that problem. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. I've got this little grey wash that I use for wheels in general. So I shall just now cover up my mistake and paint the back of the wheels. Very carefully with this grey wash. And hopefully they will look alright. It's very tricky actually painting the back of the wheel. I don't want to get any of this paint onto the base of the model that I've just painted black because then I'll have to paint the grey black and just 
goes on and on and on until you end up going crazy. Now there's one last thing to do before I put this model back together and that is for me to paint the details with this Molotov chrome paint. It's called liquid chrome and it's very expensive. And that's why I'm just using one tiny little eyedropper blob for all of the detail on this model, such as the hubcaps or the axle ends, the headlights and the radiator, and the bumper bars, front and rear. Wow. Look at the difference between the rear axle end and the front one. That really does make, make it look brand new. So it's just showing you an alternative method of making over a car. And you can see you can paint the axles with chrome paint as well. You don't have to remove them and clean them up. You can still make a half decent looking model by taking a few shortcuts. Now, uh, similar to the original owner who put this thing back together with glue, I'm going to do the same thing with this Starbond Thick Super Glue. I'm hoping that because it's thick, it should uh, run into the gap around the rivet post and seal it, as well as bonding the base firmly to the body. A bit of preparation in these glues when you get them from brand new you have to put a nozzle on you have to cut the tip of the nozzle off to expose a hole to create a hole and today I'm using these tiny little extra nozzle nozzles that uh, allow you to put one drop of glue exactly where you want it precisely because it's such a sort of a thin tiny tube they're almost like a syringe so you can place the product exactly where you want it now I want it on the side of the rivet post so that when I assemble it, I'm hoping gravity or capillary action, whatever you call it, will draw the glue down into the very small gap between the rivet post and the hole in the base plate. So as you can see, I'm putting two tiny little drops, two teardrops of super glue either side of the post. Now before it has a chance to dry, I'm clipping this together using some finger pressure and ensuring that the rivets actually protrude through the base. Now in theory, if I leave that for a couple of minutes, that glue should migrate down the post and glue the base on. Now this fine nozzle gets discarded and to save this product from going off in the bottle, there's a special little stopper here with a tiny little needle in there that goes down the tip of the original nozzle to keep it open for future use. So more detail to add now. Now that it's assembled, it makes it a lot easier to hold. And uh, if you're holding it with your hand, you see you've got two motions. You've got the one with the brush and the one that you're holding the car with and I found that the two motions combined can um, introduce errors in your painting especially when you're doing fine little areas like that and now this is the original very tatty looking thing obviously somebody's pride and joy whoever it was must have felt immense pleasure in their achievements of not only painting it another color but also putting in a new interior with seats it would have been a revolutionary as is this one on the turntable showing itself off to you, the viewers. Uh, I hope you like it. There's a few detailed shots here up close of the finished product. And I must admit, I do love that old style color. You don't see cars that color anymore. That smacks of the 1950s and 60s. And uh, it's just great.
So another makeover done and time to relax with a beer and a sandwich. <laughs> This is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeover saying thank you so much for joining me and goodbye. <laughs> because it's super glue, the lid's glued on. <laughs>